Hello Challengers, Challenger IOA here and today we'll be once again focusing on the Inca Tower Rush. Um, I've been doing a little bit um, online and I've really gotten to a point where I would like to know how I could streamline the process. There's not really a build order that I found for it um, other than doing a fast feudal um, and then distributing um, your villages as necessary but I haven't really seen how many villages need to go where to, to sustain a continuous tower rush so today will be kind of a spirit of the law-esque video um, where I'll be going and creating a excel spreadsheet determining the diff various times and essentially modeling the game um, such that I can determine how many villages I need and where to be able to sustain my tower rush. So there are a couple of things I want to address. Uh, I want to know how many bills are necessary to sustain uh, villager production. So how many villages do I need on food sources to be able to continue producing villages while I am doing my tower rush. How many villages do I need on wood and stone to allow for tower creation. Um, this also is dependent on how many villages are forward. So clearly if you've got a lot of villages forward building one tower, you need to be able to get those resources a lot quicker. And finally, I want to know how many villages do I need and where to have my blacksmith and eco upgrades uh, coming into place. So I'll probably split this series into three videos. The first addressing villager production, the second two tower creation, and finally the third to the blacksmith, smith and eco upgrades. And then um, hopefully at the end of this, we should have asked or answered the questions, uh, how many villages are you, do you actually need to start your tower rush in feudal age? So how many do I need to advance? And then how many villages can I sustain going forward? So if I send 20 villages forward, how many do I need at home and where? to be able to sustain that tower production. Because ideally, I would be sending as many villages as I can forward because that's essentially military right there. Um, but I want to be able to have as little or as few villages back so that way I can have as many villager military units forward as possible. So this is the scenario I've created um, in order to test the various um, uh, questions. Um, so today's topic of course will be about how to, to um, how many villages do I need and where for food production. Um, so I'll explain to you how each of these areas work um, and a few other things just to show you how I did the test. Um, so that way if you disagree with any of my methods or can point something out that I might have missed um, then I can include that into my model, uh, which I'll show you later. So first of all, uh, this area here is for the time needed to produce a villager. Uh, essentially, I used an in-game timer and uh, the pause button to start and finish um, the timer for each time a villager got, villager got produced, and I did five trials for this. I then also used this timer, the in-game timer, to measure how long it took for this villager to uh, kill this sheep and then harvest 10 meat and drop it off to the town centre. I did the same thing for this farmer villager um, for him to get 10 food and drop it off at the town centre. Uh, clearly this is the most ideal situation where a town sheep is under the town centre, so you need to consider that. Um, in my model, as well as the fact that farmers, um, they tend to walk around a fair bit. Um, also, depending where the farm is placed in rel relative to your town centre, it will affect the amount of time that it takes him to uh, drop it off, because more often than not, uh, villagers produce, collect their last bit of food, um, I think, if they're on the right hand side of the town centre, they'll collect the last bit of food near the town centre. So it's a very quick walk, as opposed to this side where they finish over here and they take a very long walk. Um, so that's my farms 
that's my sheep and that's my village jerk production. Over here we'll have uh, fish um, and how long it takes for a fishing ship to collect fish. Um, this is the most ideal situation yet again. This is deep fish which is the uh, quickest food source for fishing um, and it's right next to a dock. So really this fishing ship barely moving and I think if I have it here it doesn't move at all. Uh, here we have the villager that's going fishing and netting the shore fish uh, in here. I figured that in most situations you're not going to mill shore fish. It's just more of a convenience thing if they're there. So the villager does have to make this walk and I've included that into the time. Uh, up to the left we have villagers on um, bushes. Again, most ideal situation, the villager will be on this bush here, not moving uh, very far, and of course deer. So this is again is very difficult because this is dependent on where the deer runs to at first. Uh, if it runs and gets caught in the barracks, it's not as long, but sometimes it can run down here, which makes it for a longer trip. Uh, other times the, the villager gets very lucky and gets caught here. So this is also um, a variation for that for the for the model but again I've tried to account for all these things um, and uh, I'll try to explain as I go um, so I think that's everything so there's obviously to collect food you can go through your farms your berries you can use boats uh, there's deer there's sheep there's shorefish one thing I didn't include was boars uh, I figured by the time you get feudal you might not have any boars left um, and so that's a consideration. So I haven't done boars. Um, and that's everything you need to know for how I did my testing. I'll show you one example of how one of my tests was run. So just before the screen scrolls over, like, just waiting for it right now, you hit pause as the screen changes, and generally you can stop the timer on zero, zero. This time wasn't so successful. Um, and then I would just go to each section, uh, usually one at a time, and I would toss them to the roll. Uh, if I was doing the uh, villager production, I'd create my villager. And then I'd note that the time started at 0 1. Then I'd unpause, and then I'd wait for the various things to complete one cycle um, before pausing getting the game time again. I knew I started one second, so I'd say it was about 19 seconds for whatever function to occur. I again did five trials per resource, so uh, then I could take an average. Um, and the resource placement uh, really does influence the amount of time taken, so that should also be considered, as well as the fact this is an Incan Tarash. So I've used Incas for every single um, um, test because obviously their variations and civ bonuses and everything else uh, needs to be considered in this build. All right, so we'll jump now into the spreadsheet. So this is the spreadsheet. As you can see, this is my five trials. Um, to train a villager, each one took 25 seconds, and I've just taken the average of these, to, and I've used this as the official time to train a villager. Uh, this is the five trials for a farm, and again I've taken the trial average of those five. Um, I was just making a note here that it was a bottom placed farm, because um, obviously the placement of the farm is important to, to um, the test. Uh, I've also noted how much food was collected because it's not they don't collect the same amount per resource So a fishing boat collects 15 and um, as you saw on the test this fishing boat did not move at all and in the berry situation the uh, Berry villager was right next to the mill uh, Not in the scenario that you saw in the one that I was using He was placed next to the mill and he was just feeding directly off it uh, this also depended where the deer ran to, uh, 98 being the, uh, the best time and 100 being the worst time. So there was a fair bit of variation in the deer trial. trial. Uh, the sheep, 
uh, included the time to kill the sheep and minor walking towards the sheep and such. Um, sometimes there was a fair bit of variation where the sheep would sometimes bug out and um, when the, the shepherd would try and herd it, it would kind of walk in a weird direction and um, that made it very difficult for the farmer to kill it and uh, etc. Uh, this is for the shorefish and again this was a uh, include the walk time. Um, in situations like this I didn't stop and start. This uh, first one was when the villager started at the fish and then clearly they would have to walk backwards and forwards for these for the rest of them. That's why this one was so much quicker because they only had to make that one walk. All right, so moving into the actual data now. I took all the average times, and that's just these cells here. So this is just equaling the average times that you saw. Um, I've then also arranged them in order of average time, um, so that way I can see which one was going to be the best. Uh, this is a little bit misleading, and I'll get to that uh, in a moment. So the contingency here was just I took a standard deviation of the scores and I added it to the average time. Um, I did this because I wanted to uh, allow a factor um, for any issues that may come up during testing or when you're playing the game because villagers don't usually uh, work in the most efficient way when you're playing mid-game and, and you're stressing and worrying about everything. Uh, these two red ones uh, also include traveling distance because I th generally think that especially for boats they are generally moving so I've allowed one second for moving out one second for moving back now this is to say that the shorefish is still quite close to the dock though and that should be considered and then this is simply just a collection or uh, the new collection time of your contingency plus your average time this is the amount of food collected which is clearly determined by the game so when you're hunting you get 35 food carried by deer uh, 15 by uh, boats carrying fish and then as you can see i did it done it in iterations so i've choose chosen a value for the amount of villages based upon um, general experience um, and then this has produced this number this number essentially is taking the proportion of time so i needed every 25 seconds i needed to have 50 food available for me to be able to produce a villager however every single time was greater than 25 seconds to collect the resource so i couldn't have five villages because if i had five villages they were collecting 50 food after the 25 seconds it takes to produce a a villager so i needed to be able to have more villages than five so that, that was a good start. Um, so in this case, I selected six for farmers, uh, seven for sheep, uh, etc. As you can see, and then this determines how many uh, after 25 seconds of the total time it takes them to collect um, times the amount collected in number of villages. This gives you the total food per villager times the amount of time it takes them. So this essentially tells you that after 25 seconds, they will have collected 52.388 food for those six villages. Uh, clearly, once they hit 10, that's when they drop it off. So this 2.38 is almost useless because obviously you can't spend that unless you um, force drop off that food. Now, this takes us into this table. What this does is take considers all the time intervals. So it takes 25 seconds to produce a villager. So this is game time. So at zero seconds game time, you are, buy you are buying one villager for 50 food. You are also, um, you also in this situation, starting off with 100 food. I imagine the fact that when you're hitting into feudal age, you're probably going to have 100 food, or more than likely going to have 100 food saved in the bank. So this means that your first two villages are essentially free. And so I've done that by saying you have 100 food in the bank. Your first villager is going to be that minus your 100 minus the first villager cost. Then in the next 25 seconds, 
you're going to have your leftover food, that 50, and you're going to remove the cost of your next villager. And you're going to add on that 25 seconds of food collected. And then it just repeats itself. So you have that much food left over, you add it on, you remove the 50 for the next villager, and you've got 25 seconds more collected of food. So over time, you should be gaining food, and that's what you want. If you're losing food, that means eventually you're not going to be able to sustain villager production. And what that produces is this. This is your food collected over time. I'll just zoom out a little bit. In fact, I'll make it smaller so it's easier to see. In your dark blue, you've got the cost of your villages. So every, this is your time here. You know it's going to cost you 50 food over that whole duration. Your farms, your sheep, your boats, your fishing, your berries and deer should always be growing. If they're not growing and they fall below the bill's cost, that means you're not producing enough food to produce villages. So I'll show, I'll show you an example of that. Let's say I decide, so remember this was for farms. I decide that I want to stick five villages on farms. Now we can see that from the go, I am losing this much food over time. And eventually, probably around 200 seconds, I'm going to get to a point where the villagers aren't able to sustain the amount of food. Now, something you might think back to now is but challenger, you know, uh, when I played this game, I was taught that, you know, six, six villagers getting sheep is, is enough to sustain villager production at the start of the game. And, and that is true. When you start with, what, 250 food in the bank, you've got five villages already, um, three villages for you to produce. By having six uh, villages on sheep, uh, you're able to sustain that that food production but I'm just going to stick this back on six and now I this is what I'm explaining here I've kind of jumped the gun so if I stick the sheep on six what you're actually doing is slowly losing food but because you've got so much food uh, 250 essentially changing this number from 100 to 250 you have a lot of time before you start running into a deficit. So in actuality, although um, it appears that you're gaining food, you're really not. And that's where you, when you, you add villages to your berries, you add villages to your boar, that is when you start making surplus. The first six villages aren't actually gaining you um, food. They're just reducing the rate of, of um, food loss that you're receiving. So if you actually want to get food, you need to have seven villages on sheep. Considering the fact that you've probably only got eight sheep in the game anyway, so this isn't sustainable in the end. So what I might do now is just quickly run through some of these um, considerations. The first one is that you're going to have 100 food entering the feudal age. You need that. You also are assuming that you're going to have those two villages because of that. Uh, these times are averages and based upon the most ideal situation, except for boats and fishing, where I've added in extra factors to include the fact that there is walking time to and from. Um, and I think that's all there really is to this. So what I might do now is actually have a look at, um, we'll try farms and we'll run it in game time and we'll see if our uh, predicted uh, will match the actual. So let's try and do that in game now. All right, so we're back to the game now. Um, this is a new test code that I've created. Um, we've got, as you can see, the six farmers. So what I might do is I'll test it out and I'll show you guys how I've been running my tests. So again, waiting for the screen to go swipe across, you can hit pause and it stops with zero. 
So, while it's on zero, I'm going to task each of my six farmers. I'm going to select my town centre, and I'm going to create as many villages as I can. Remember, we start with 100 food. So, things to consider here. My model has predicted that we should have 57.16 food in the bank after this. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and we should have created four villages. That's why, so, so I'm going to stop the timer at 1 minute 15 seconds, which is 75 seconds, which means we've created four villages. Uh, really, the village production isn't important. I mean, all I have to do is make sure there's negative 200 in the end. So, minute four. Three, two, one, time. Alright, so I've got my four villages being produced. So, anything that's here is in the bank. So, we've got 20 plus 6, 8, 13, uh, 28, 43, 33, 38. So, my 20 plus my 38 gives me 58 food. My model predicted 57.6. We'll just jump back to it so you can see for yourself. Alright, so we're back in the model. Now remember, we ran the timer for 75 seconds. In that time, we created four villages. Our farms predicted us with six uh, villages to collect 57.2 food. We got 58 food. So this is pretty accurate um, considering everything. Um, I went away on my own time and I did this for the rest of the resources. And the biggest outlier was sheep, so I'll just talk about that one. Sheep for 75 seconds predicted 70.54, but I actually got 64 food. This is not good. I would rather that my model um, under predicted because that means you're over prepared. Uh, still, however, you don't want six on sheep, so you're better off having seven on sheep and you will definitely meet that quota. Um, so what's this? What this? What this all simmers down to? Hopefully you, you agree with me that the model is quite accurate and it works, provided you have a hundred food heading into feudal. Uh, and if you agree with me on that, and you agree with, with me that my contingencies make sense, uh, especially with this walking time, then if you have six villages on farms, seven on sheep, or five fishing ships, or seven villages on fishing or seven villages on berries, or six on deer, you will be able to sustain village reproduction constantly while you are tower rushing. What this means then, is if you want to have the most villages forward, then you should probably be focusing on fishing ships. Because if you've got five fishing ships, that means the rest of your population, because let's assume you've gone up to, to feudal and 22 population, that means you now have as opposed to, you know, six villages farming, you have an extra villager going forward, uh, creating towers and just wreaking havoc using an Inca tower rush. So that is what the first point or the first video is going to discuss. We now know how many villages we need in order to sustain villager production on food. The next video will be learning about how many villages we need on stone how many villages we need on wood in order to continue our tower production. These videos will be coming uh, over the next few Saturdays as well. So if you guys have any questions or you have any points to make about my calculations, definitely let me know. Uh, I'd love to tweak this because again, I would love to use these numbers in order to create the most uh, streamlined um, tower rush so feel free to leave those in the comments if you have a map for me to play uh, email it to me at challenger aoa at gmail.com but other than that i'll catch you guys in future videos see you challenges